Welcome to the Cherry Picker, the horror movie podcast where we like to kill people, but not really. I'm your host, Zach Cherry, and with me as always is... I don't think a person should run unless he's being chased. Eddie of Edward is Truth. And today we are talking about The Faculty, released... The Facility. December 25th, 1998. This was a Christmas right. release movie, and that's why we're doing it. Yeah. 25 years, uh, believe it or not. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Isn't it? Your enthusiasm for this movie is just dripping off of <laughs> you. <laughs> oh, scintillating. Like, yeah. I, I can barely contain myself. Mm. <laughs> the spectacle that I'm going to make of myself, this whole raving lunatic of a movie. Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> I don't know about you, but I mean, this, uh, this movie I actually saw... I, I don't want to... I'm, who goes to movies on Christmas? I guess a lot of people do. I don't remember if I saw it on Christmas, but this was definitely a movie that I saw when it was released in the theater. So it's, oh, okay. it has been with me for this entire time. Mm. Um, and it's one of those movies, um, as I every time I watch it now, I'm discovering it's very much in the same vein as H2O. And mm-hmm. Bride of Chucky of just those those movies that I have a lot of nostalgia for, and I really loved when I first saw them. And the more and more I watch them, I still enjoy them a lot. And this is probably the one that I enjoy the most out of the the three that I've just mentioned. Wow. Um, but it it certainly there are things in it, and every time I watch it, it's just like diminishing returns. So Ooh. I have to be very careful about how many times I watch The Faculty moving forward with the rest of my life because i i want to i want to preserve that that memory of it i want to you know nostalgia is tricky right it's like a friend who you met a long time ago and you like them and you don't want to end the friendship but the more time you spend with them the 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 less you want to (laughs) so i literally good in small bursts yeah i literally moved it i think i had it rated as a four and a half on a letterbox um uh, before after today i just moved it down half a star oh okay yeah yeah um, the dreadful I half the a star <laughs> i didn't see it in the theaters i i saw it sometime back when i had satellite when it was on cable it, it seemed to be it was one of those movies that was on all the time so i just kind of like happened upon it at one point and i do remember i actually again like with that whole time I remember kind of like the campaign for this movie, like, you know, with the trailers and particularly like the commercials for the soundtrack. Or even if you look at the trailers for it, I think they advertised the soundtrack alongside with the movie. It was one of those. Probably, yeah. Um, I had the soundtrack. I I have it on vinyl now, too, but I had the CD when it first came out. (laughs) Right, it's one of those things where I remember I, I, I remember the poster because that actually is really a you know a memorable image and it and it's you know in keeping with like H two O and with the like which okay, poster have, you know, are like... you talking about though because there's two there's like the actual oh. like the the key art the release art and then there's like I guess the the DVD art <laughs> I, I'm probably referring to the DVD and like the CD like art where it's basically like you know the scream formation you know a row of kids and yeah the geese flying uh (laughs) so josh hartnett at the at at the the head of the the center yeah yeah Yeah. um yeah no i i hate that that key art uh or that that okay because it's it's so basic um, and yeah. there's nothing in the background. It just it looks like just like blurry um, like images. Like there's sort of like faces. It, it almost like yeah. it, it, it evokes the feeling of the scene when they're walking to the car and everyone's just like Casey, Delilah, and like the, like that. That's what that's what that reminds me of because you just see like the faces, <laughs> but like a really crappy version of it. I like the original one because it's like it it almost uh, is a parody of Independence Day because you have the school behind them. And they're in a V formation, but like a reverse V formation, like more like the original Scream where like Drew Barrymore was sort of at the, she was like the closest uh, person, uh-huh. uh, like most up close. And then like the rest of them were right. kind of like uh, staggered behind in, in different places. And I think it was like Nev on one side. So it was Josh Hartnett was like at the, at the front, but then like there was just various other characters scattered about. And then you have the school in the back and there's like, oh. 
it, I don't know if it was an alien spaceship over the school, but it was like a beam. It looked like Independence Day with like the beam um, oh, coming down, and it was just it. It was fun. It, it was better than yeah. what the what the the DVD art was. That's for sure. For, yeah, probably more specific to like what the I, I again. Oh God, we'll we'll unpack all of this, but just like to I guess what the at least the intent of like what the movie was, and I guess by and large what the movie consists of as far as like it's kind of sci-fi thriller angle um yeah yeah but um yeah i remember seeing it then i just i I, and uh, even uh, shortly after the time of its release when it was you know like uh on televisions and stuff like that i do and available to buy on dvd and everything i remember even then i must have been like about 19 or 20 and uh (laughs) Just feeling like I was too old for it. Like I had already kind of like moved on. Like mm. it was one of those. It because it didn't. It it didn't have any kind of like justifiable fear for me. Like I was watching it. And I was just kind of like, oh, this is kid stuff. And then I I knew <laughs> that I was probably too old for it because I was more excited about the actors playing the faculty than I was about the actors who we were following. Our main protagonists, who were the teens, who yeah. you know were probably like in their twenties at the time, also, but. I was like, B.B. Newworth, she just won a Tony for Chicago, and Piper Laurie, Margaret White from Carrie. Well, and, what's interesting know, like... is that like the movie is called The Faculty, and yeah. I feel like we spend a lot of time with the faculty earlier on, and incidentally, mm, I, I like the movie <laughs> in the first, uh, like probably like the first half of the movie a lot better than, than the second mm. half. Um, okay. But it's just like, yeah, we end up just like, being more student focused at the end i'm just like why is it just not called the students <laughs> <laughs> well i mean and I, see even that was like kind of obvious to me because this is gonna this is one of those movies that's like geared toward teens or at least toward like younger viewers and everything like oh, that of course. and that's why and that's why everybody look even you know no matter regardless of like what their standing is as far as their status you know like in 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 uh the pecking order of uh the school uh everybody looks actually really really good you know like everybody's got really clear skin everybody's you know looks like they could be on the cover of a magazine yesterday and um we're they they are that character because we're told they're that character and that was that was another thing that got me i remember and especially like with this most recent screening it never gets easier for me i don't have your experience of diminishing returns with this movie i feel like i try to just kind of like go okay Let's see what happens when I turn it on. <laughs> and I'm just kind of inundated with uh, opportunities for notes and criticism and uh, 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 that's a fact. I will say that this movie, I think that this movie is tremendously fun. Um, okay. and, I, and I feel that like everyone in it is having a good time being in the movie. Yeah. Um, I just think that it's one of those movies that, and from the sounds of it, of what I've been reading, is that it was rushed. Uh, the yeah. Weinstein's uh, dimension uh, really wanted to kind of just push this out as, as quickly as possible. Because I guess, like, they, I mean, Scream 2 had come out in 97. They didn't really have anything on the docket, I guess, for 98, or at least, like, in that mm-hmm. time period. Because I guess, what else did we have? Like, there was a lot of horror coming out in 98. Um, like obviously Bride of Chucky, Urban Legend, I Still Know What You Did Last Summer. Um, I was going to say Disturbing Behavior. I don't think that uh, <laughs> made any ripples. But, um, what? Fuck. I, hold on. I'll tell you in a second here. I'm, I'm, I'm bringing up the, the 1998s. Um, oh, H2O. Dimension had right. H2O, but I, they probably, you know, wanted to double down and just because H2O came out in the summer and this was Christmas. So it was just mm-hmm. like the 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 last quarter of the year so it felt like they they really wanted to rush it and there are aspects of this because this is i mean you were talking about the promotion and this was really heavily put out there as because i remember the trailer um from the director of desperado and from dust till dawn which is robert rodriguez and the writer of scream and they, they probably said scream too because they want to keep it within the, the Miramax family. I don't think they said, I know he did last summer. Um, to really just like push like Robert Rodriguez, Kevin Williamson. You know, this is very Scream focused. Uh, and it, it, in that regard, it is kind of looked upon as, as being like 
the scream version of science fiction movies of just like a like a teen mm-hmm. movie with with aliens and this was not this is credited kevin williamson is credited as the screenwriter but the original story was actually written uh eight years before this in 1990 by two writers bruce kimmel and uh david wechter was the thank other one. you david wechter um and it just yeah. like they just simply could not sell the script and you can find the script <laughs> online like it's it's more or less it's pretty much as it is Sure. Um, and it's obviously like just because it never was purchased by any studio or anything like it doesn't have a polish to it I don't I don't even know if that was like the final draft of it um, so there's a lot of like logic loopholes in it but like everything's the same it's a little darker like I know that like some of the characters some of the teen characters do uh, get killed in it um, mm. but the the main thing that changed when Kevin Williamson came on board is that he infused sort of like the, I guess the, the slanguage or like, you know, like the, mm. what, whatever, however, like the kid sounded in the late nineties and also kind of the meta aspects. So like the conversations when they're talking about, uh, body snatchers and independence day and yada, 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 that's very yeah. much the scream thing of just like, Oh, well, science fiction movies and, and this and that. But, this was just they just rushed this to get done um and i and i feel like the, because of the caliber of the cast like a lot of people really wanted to be in this they really thought it was something and i don't know why but this this movie has just fallen off the radar completely because there's even the blu-ray there are no special features there's no uh, definitive edition of this movie where there's like anyone even like talking in a commentary let alone like a featurette and it's very hard to find anything like even like Robert Rodriguez speaking to this movie, and it and it feels like even if you watch the trailer, there are scenes that have been cut out, like just excised yeah. completely. So it does feel like there are things missing from this movie. So I think it's just there's, one of the yeah, yeah. There's about forty minutes of bonus footage or behind the scenes footage, uh, I think, is as it's put that I found on YouTube because I was curious. I, yeah. I you know I. I I didn't just sit there with my arms crossed and, you know, dismiss this movie. In fact, I went back because I had some questions and rather than just kind of put them to you, you know, like a lazy podcaster, I felt like, okay, let me go back and see if I can do some digging and answer some questions for myself. And I did a little bit just watching, I'd say, uh, you know, your preferred section of the movie, the first third, I'd guess, uh, the first act. And then I got even more questions answered. I feel kind of watching the behind the scenes footage because even in that you're watching them shoot scenes and one moment in particular um that's as good an example as any it's when jordana brewster is meeting uh, i forget her name but smiley blonde bangs and the mary bath <laughs> yeah and yeah. she starts I, I don't remember any of the characters names. Mother. i'm gonna call them by their real names <laughs> or by you know identifiers yeah. physical yeah. identifiers so, I mean, uh, Edward, said, they literally s- like spelled the names of the characters on the screen. I know, and at the I hate it. I hate it <laughs> so much. I'm sitting there going like, "Oh, great! Now I have homework. I have you, you. You know, if you want me to remember the characters' names, just make them memorable. Just have them call each other by their names at some point, and I'll be like, oh, that's what their name.' I am. I mean, that they person do who, like, a lot. Sits. Yeah, they do. But because I don't, I just, oh, I can't with this movie. I, I there's no hook <clears> for me. Anyway, okay. Anyway, so. Jordana Brewster's coming over, and Clea Duvall's talking with Smiley Blonde Bangs, and she, st- and there's an, ex- she, I think she cuts right to kind of like the lesbianism and and the wearing multiple shades of black or something like that in the movie. Whereas there's a little bit more of an exchange between her and uh, Smiley Girl, and uh, about like um, you know, kind of like being hospitable and showing her around school and what she's going to do for her and everything like that. And even just that made the scene more interesting. And I felt like, okay, that's probably problem one that I that I find I have with the movie is that I I I can't remember the last time I watched a movie that was I, I arguably so well paced, quote unquote. Yet it lost me. Like, I actually wish there were a little bit more room to settle and just kind of, like, get to know these people, yeah. you know, like, in, in in a natural way. Because the cinematic way they're trying to kind of, like, push them into my face, I don't find appealing. Does that make sense? 
I mean, I understand what you're saying. I don't agree with it. Um, okay. I will say, like, the movie is really well paced. Um, I think what the problem might be, which I think is a problem, is that, and and I'm going to say this, and then we'll go into like the housekeeping and then the the premise. Um, sure. The the problem is that it's an ensemble. And like very much like the way Scream 4 is, where there's not really enough focus dedicated to one person. I would argue that um, Casey, Elijah Wood, Mm -hmm. kind of moves to the forefront as the movie goes on. But in the first act especially, we're spending so much time divided amidst like the central, like the six characters and also showing the faculty as well that we're not really getting like if anything i think that actually stan the the football player probably has the most uh scenes and dialogue or just like we like get get the best idea of just like everything because he's saying he just keeps talking at face value about like everything it's like i want to quit the team because i want people to respect me for you know (laughs) for for being you know the the d student i am or, or whatever yeah. his spiel is. Whereas everyone else is just like, it's it's very much like these are the, the archetypes that, that mm-hmm. they're going to be. And it's not really until the end of the first act where we get um, Casey coming back to the school with his parents and then the police uh, involved that it's really kind of becomes his movie then. And we go to his home and we see his home life. So I think that that's kind of... I don't want to say it hinders the first act because it does lend to like a a really good rapid fire pace, but it does leave a lot to be desired for establishing some of these characters beyond just like the very basic uh, stereotypes that you would see with them. Sure. Um, Before I rebut, like maybe we should housekeep. (laughs) Let's housekeep. There's not that much housekeeping there. um, I'll I'll, I'll just say that uh, if you uh, would like to support the cherry picker on patreon you can head over to my patreon zach cherry uh with that you will get early access to all of our episodes uh that come out every tuesday those will be available the week prior much earlier uh if you are subscribed to the freddy krueger cherry you'll get access to the cherry picker after dark which is uh our monthly bonus episode and uh Mm -hmm. this month we did batman returns next month we're doing uh, Final Girls. What you describe this because you kind of it was your concept. Uh, basically like a comparison, or I, I can't remember. If it, we weren't doing a ranking where it was just a comparison. No, it's not a ranking. Like, yeah, yeah, it was just a comparison of like uh, the OG Final Girls and their remake slash reboot counterparts. Like, okay, and which one is which one wins? I, I guess. Li- which one is stronger? I like <laughs> comparing women. Make it pitting women yeah. against women. Edward. Let's pit women <laughs> against each other. It hasn't been done enough. <laughs> I like it though. Pitting it's, no, women it's, against each other. It's the kind of content people want these days. I I like it, and I'm and I'm and I'm happy that you rose to the occasion and and, and suggested something for once. Uh, <laughs> but uh. um, no, because that, so that's coming up in January. Um, I do want to welcome two new Patreon supporters. Uh, So uh, hello to Marissa Miller and Michael Miller. I have no idea if there's any familial relation there, but uh, we got the Millers. Uh, So thank you. Thank you very much for coming on and supporting. Uh, And I also want to thank Boy Cried Wolf, who is our editor, uh, who's always there uh, while I chirp at him uh, to to get things done. So thank you for putting up with me and all that. Um, And and the other thing I'll say in terms of housekeeping is that uh, coming up in the new year, so we are taking a break uh, for the first week in January. So, I mean, there are five Tuesdays in, in January, so we will... Still have four episodes out. One of them will be that cherry picker after dark that Edward mentioned. But uh, just so you know, we are off next week. But if you are supporting on Patreon, you will get that episode early because we are recording it before the year ends. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, with that, I, I think I think that's all the housekeeping we got to do. So let's hear a premise. 
Okay. I, I have to say, while I was watching, there were also a number of interviews with these behind the scenes, uh, uh, with this behind the scenes footage. And right. I was kind of like captivated by Josh Hartnett and Jordana <laughs> Brewster's interviews, like their individual interviews, because they had this vocal fry going while they were talking about Robert and what it was like to work with him. Mm. So I think I'm just going to do a vocal fry. I don't remember it really being prevalent in the movie, but where that's does this what take I place? Do. It's like Ohio, right? Um, they, I know they shot in Texas, but I don't know where it's supposed to be. I think it's, well, it's like, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I don't okay. know why I just if went to a vocal fry. You would be the one to ask. I, I lose interest really easily with this I one. know, Jesus. <laughs> I am not the one to ask. Uh, but okay, this was on IMDb. It was uh, modified from Jordan Chemerski's. Um, I kind of did what the editors did uh, <laughs> for this movie and just hacked away at it. So it's two sentences. So here we go. Teenage students suspect their high school staff of being aliens. Could their intention to be to make the students... Fuck, I fucked it up. Could their <laughs> intention... <laughs> Stop laughing. Could their intention be to make the students victims of the faculty? There you go. Great. I... That's... There's that enthusiasm that you were dripping with earlier. <laughs> I mean, is it re is there really that much more to it? I mean, I suppose I could have like been like when they're walking through a school or you know like whatever the teacher one night and then the next morning I don't but I didn't want to yeah <laughs> but okay case in point like okay the opening I'm I'm kind of on board I'm like okay cool whatever like you know and I got my I got my BB I got my Piper All right, and babe. um. And and also that yeah, yeah. I love Piper Laurie and then also um, I don't know the actor's name but the the coach I'll just refer oh, to oh Robert the coach Patrick is... yeah T two Robert Patrick yeah okay. Terminator um, two oh that's right I haven't seen it in so he was long. also okay. David Duchovny's replacement on the X Files for like the last uh, two seasons really yeah I I, did I not never even I know that you know I never replaced. I never watched. <laughs> that series religiously but i know that like oh. towards the end they had um he he came on because david duchovny was like he he was done with the show i think he came back right. for like guest appearances but i i distinctly remember at that time because this would have been still while the x-files was um airing that robert right. patrick was everywhere like you would just see him he was always on on network oh, okay. television in movies yeah. so he's yeah you, you see him in everything and he's worked with robert rodriguez a lot before i think he was in from dust till dawn too although i think rodriguez was just a producer on that but uh, the more you know the, one, right, the more right, you know right. yeah, yeah there you go uh, <laughs> but um yeah he could he's the first uh teacher we uh get introduced to because that was another question that i had i was just kind of like after the first viewing i was like why are the women only the only faculty members getting like the makeovers after they get all? And then I did notice like, well, they, his version, uh, the coach's version of a makeover is that in the opening scene he is like sweating from the pits and chest, and he is wearing a ball cap. And then the next time we and he's all sweaty and stuff. But the next time we see him, he's like clean shaven. He's got raked a comb through his hair. I'm I really glad that you're bringing this up because that was. Not necessarily a gripe. I mean, I guess we can call it a gripe, but because I, I, yeah. I'm not bothered by it in that way. But <laughs> it was really hard to track sort of like how how does one transform once they are infected by the parasite? Yeah. Because in, on, on one hand, you have sort of this idea that like they kind of become these mindless uh, just robots. Like they're just sort of well-behaved and you know mm. like every you, we see everyone like raising their hand in the classroom there's when right. stan is taken over and even like mary beth's little spiel she's just like everyone is happy there's you know it's a world where there is no like fear no doubt right. <laughs> till they pulled me out um and no, no it's just like kind of a, it's like they're just a very peaceful um uh, alien race even though that's a lie because we see that they're clearly in this scene in question are not right. but so we do have we do see some people who are just very kind of composed and well put together then there are like some of the women like selma hayek who's just like you know looking sickly and she's got her hair and the ponytail and as soon as she comes <laughs> comes back the next day Ooh, she's just she's yeah. selma hayek now um right. hot hot <laughs> nurse 
um, Fonka <laughs> Jensen. Uh, so yeah, yes. there's just like, it, it's really this thing and it's just, it's not consistent. Like maybe like the male characters, like some, they might have like more swagger in their step, but there, there is no consistency because it, it also feels like some of them just yeah. become more like, like it, it's, it's the idea of like a, a, when you're become a vampire, like your soul is gone and right. the demon who takes over just kind of like sets up shop in your body and it has your memories and right. your personality. So it kind of like, like uh, taps into your id and just becomes like the most wildest version of you. So it's, that's completely the Buffy, the Buffy that's, definition. <laughs> exactly. But, but that's the, yeah. that's the entire opposite end of like what, like the just being like the mindless like happy go lucky the shiny happy people just being like yo this is so nice right you know so it there is no consistency that is like one of the first things that doesn't make any sense yeah and also to like kind of like uh on top of that inconsistency i did have a, a question for you that i couldn't really rationalize for myself in a way that mattered and i don't know if it ever occurred to, to you before but because it's, it's it's something that gets doubled down on there's the one point where Piper Laurie, like, uh, the, you know, the bait and switch of it where we think, like, she's just a sweet, you know, old lady who wants the kids to do guys and dolls. And I, I really like, like, that aspect of it. That felt very human to me. But also, I was one of those theater kids. Anyway, um, <laughs> we even used the set from our town that I did in the fall for our musical Annie the next, <laughs> in the spring, the next semester. Anyway, so that was all like, oh, that rings true. Anyway. But, okay, so after she, like, stabs B.B. Newerth, though, mm -hmm. she has this kind of, like, huge kind of, like, gasp or whatever, or, you know, like, re relief, a sigh, and she just goes, I always wanted to do that. And I, and I wanted to know, what is with that? Because also, somebody else says it. I don't remember who later on. He, no, it's they... earlier, because it's that same scene. It's, it's uh, Coach uh, Robert Patrick. Because he stabs yeah. her in the hand with a pencil, and right. then he says, "I always wanted okay. to do that." And then it and then it proceeds to go to the chase, and okay. then she goes outside, and then uh, right. Piper Laurie. Uh, it doesn't somebody else say it at some point too? No, I think that's the, those are the only no? two. Maybe okay. I'm mistaken, okay, okay. but that's I, yeah. Okay, I could have sworn there was one more, but I could be wrong. But okay, so I just wanted to know what is with that. I've always wanted to do that, which suggests that there is. <clears throat> some kind of history, some kind of like backlog of like urges that were being stifled before that are now free, no longer restrained, if turning over to the alien race is a metaphor for like a loss of discernible identity and everybody kind of like fitting in in the name of peace and yeah. harmony and all of that. Why are we so kind of like relieved that we're finally unleashing something that we always wanted to do yeah. if the whole point is to, you know, kind of like divine yourself from that. So there is no identity. There is no reason for conflict. I didn't understand. It's and yeah, this is sense? this is where the alien canon is just all over the place. And I don't know if this is, because I, I, I didn't read the, the original script in preparation for this, but I did read okay. it a few years back. And um, right. I, I don't know, I, I, I couldn't tell you because I don't remember exactly. I know that the movie is, like I said earlier, more or less the same. There are like major changes in terms of, like I think Stan and Delilah are killed. Um, so it's like the outcast characters oh. survive. But um, hmm. I think the Kevin Williamson coming in like definitely doubled down on the confusion of it. I'm just thinking like Kevin Williamson's uh, Halloween HBO to Resurrection when the nurse says there was lots of confusion. That's basically <laughs> he came in here and was like there was lots of confusion. That's just Kevin Williamson from draft MO. A to draft B. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, because yeah, on one hand you can look at that because like we see that these teachers hate uh, Principal Drake. Uh, played by B.B. Right. New Earth. And sure. it's like we see it in that that staff meeting that they're having in that scene. And then we see it later on when they're commenting about how the air conditioning isn't on and they call her a bitch and, and yada, yada, yada. So it mm. does suggest what I, what I had said earlier is that once you become infected by the parasite, it kind of taps into your id. And you, you know, if that's something that, oh, fuck, and I forget what her name is as the teacher, but Piper Laurie's character uh, and yeah. same with, with the coach, we're just always like, yeah, I don't really like this bitch. And, you know, they might have in their in their wildest, most like 
bassist unrestrained versions of themselves might have been like yeah i'm gonna fucking stab you with a pencil or scissors that they might have done that and said i always wanted to do that um and now that they now that they know she's going to be turned well this is the acceptance maybe uh, this is and this is where the this is the biggest fucking conundrum because i mean you you also mentioned like is this a hive mind are they all just sort of controlled by because it's all that's also based on the way that the movie ends where you just have to kill the queen and then everyone dies that would tell me that these this is just a hive mind everyone is right yeah uh mary beth but it's not and they're allu- but, they allude to that much too when jordana yeah. brewster's eyes go all like spoiler when her eyes go all white and she starts talking about like whatever she says like we are just gonna keep coming and coming you can't stop us or yeah. what, whatever she says it makes it sound like okay so yeah. this is a hive mind this is like a shared entity occupying multiple bodies that's but, as much as i could yeah but a hive you can't have a hive mind and this like idea of like the the absence of the human and like instead like just like their id coming to the forefront or just like the, right. the parasite taking like taking up shop in a in the human body because yeah, that would give right. each parasite its own individual personality so anyway there's there's that yeah. like the movie doesn't really know which aspect of okay. this this lore it wants to um okay. to, to uh, move towards but the thing okay. that i find so frustrating is that they full-on murder her in that scene yeah, she's yeah, de- as a human she is dead but then she and, yeah. and the way that they describe this because it was like a polygic i think was the word uh um uh the the life form that they found yeah, like a yeah. water um like some sort of like aquatic creature that that's yeah. it it does come like into your system and yada 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 and it needs water to survive so it's just like if this is a corpse now like why would they be setting up uh, or like infecting her with a parasite if she's just a corpse at this point because they you have the other teacher with the, w- who has cancer and they try to uh, infect her and she dies because she's she's sick and she's dehydrated she doesn't have the the water the sufficient amount of water in her body to host one of the parasites so that doesn't make any sense like is 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 prin- is the principal dead at this point? That's what that's right. what doesn't make any sense to me. But she shows up <laughs> alive and well. She's she's dressed all sexily. She's got her yeah. chest exposed. There are no scars or anything. Yeah. Um, there is it is kind of put in there or just suggested that this parasite gives you. Um, rapid regenerative healing powers because like obviously right. Fonka Jensen gets decapitated and then like by the end of the movie she's she's there <laughs> she's got a scarf around her head or her, her yeah. neck so it just maybe she's covering up a scar there but like it's it, yeah like they're, they're, they're suggesting so many things but none of it makes any sense and this, yeah. and this is this is the thing where this troubles me on a level of just like more so not just the continuity, but more so just like the characters, because I feel like mm-hmm. they, there's really a missed opportunity here because it got really dark because at one point, like when they're doing the thing scene, except instead of a blood test, it's like the snort test. Yes. Um, yes. Stokely, Clea Duvall says, she's just like, well, if like brings up the thing, it's just like, this is how we kill it. We just have to find the, the queen and then and then hypothetically if we get rid of them then that means that everyone just goes back to normal and they're and they she makes a point to say that like because they're like so what happens does everyone just die no everyone will just go back to normal but she's just yeah. she's just conjecturing all this she doesn't know if it's actually real but they had this conversation yeah. to just be like okay then people can still live like people can still survive if if we just go and kill the queen yeah. and they have this standoff in the gymnasium and, and the principal comes in and they're like unsure. Like Casey's like, are we sure it's her? And they're like, it has to be her based on no evidence other than the fact that she's the principal of the school. And then Josh Hartnett comes in with a gun and just shoots her point blank in the head. Yes. And then even then they're like, I think we're wrong. But there's just, there's no like, the way that they're acting is just like, oh, well, <laughs> we just killed someone in cold blood. <laughs> And I mean, yeah, I mean, because they still don't know. So maybe that's kind of justifiable because they're also kind of like sitting on it, waiting to see what the result's going to be. But yeah, I, but yeah I, I, I agree with you otherwise. Like, because also that's another thing that bothers me. You brought up uh, Funk and Jensen's 
character i have a lot to say about her <laughs> but just in relation to like what we've covered so far yeah again with the identity thing and kind of like the backstory like retaining it if the whole point of this thing like housing all of these people is to you know kind of like create a harmonious environment where the world can have peace finally yeah um as long as the alien has dominion over all of us um famka's I mean, the fact that she's now con completely transformed and has no problem getting in the face of a student in plain view of other students shrieking yeah. in his face about things that bothered her back when she was herself that she never felt like she had, you know, the freedom, I guess, <laughs> to voice and, and, and even, like, register, like, the level of rage that he must have, like, triggered in her mm -hmm. uh, all those times that he disrespected her and just, you know, com and, and completely... Because even... That's another thing. It's even the way that scene is structured, it still continues to enrage me because as she's laying into him, he's he's not affected right away. He's just kind of doing that... Come on, just let it go, let yeah. it go. And I'm like, oh my god, this is infuriating. I kind of wish she'd go full tilt. That's another, that, that's kind of like a good metaphor for like the whole movie. I feel like go in a direction, like commit to something. Stop kind of wavering between yeah. either like kill him, <laughs> you know, like and and let this be some kind of like manifestation of like you know you find your bliss and the way to your bliss is no restraint and the people who survive like survival of the fittest kind of thing or have her be so fucking creepy that sh nothing about him bothers her because she's got a plan she's going to coax him into yeah. a trap so she can make him you know like it just doesn't make any sense the way the the hive mind alien thing is going yeah. about its business if people are going to be shrieking at each other and everything like that that seems to be counterproductive unless there's like a last spurt yeah. of identity before they, and and but well, the no because then like later on that. she's just like she's just the same to, like she's just like really, right. <laughs> and th and that's the thing like I, what is their relationship it's that is like the biggest anomaly to oh, me God. of this movie I mean yeah one of them because. She is her like kind of like mousy self, like as as normal. Then she's she's turned and she just turns into like this super super bitch, but just like really sexy. And then at the end of the movie, she's kind of making eyes at him. She's sitting on the bleachers, watching him play football and like waving at him. And he's I'm, I'm... he's into it. I mean, he's he's clearly like he's um, I guess nineteen. Like he's he's held back a year. Uh, yeah. uh, from from what's suggested, but it's mm. yeah, it's like there's there's this weird undertone that's not really suggested. So there's there's these character threads that exist yeah. that are never fully developed, yeah. and I think what have been would have been interesting is if we did kind of get to see more of the character's relationship with the faculty as a whole rather than just like these little offshoots of, of like one off relationships that don't really go anywhere. Cause it yeah. seemed like Zeke did not have any interactions with anyone else on the faculty except for Fomka Jensen. Yeah. Um, I think that Casey, like Elijah Wood, he probably had the most interaction with, with the faculty, which made, which makes sense why he does kind of like transcend to this main character. Mm -hmm. But in that regard, it, like I was saying, like maybe this, shouldn't have been an ensemble and it should have just focused on the one character to then kind of mm -hmm. uh tell a better story um that's not i just yeah. want to say like i i enjoy the hell out of this movie if it seems like it's very <laughs> negative but i'm just it's it's fun to explore other options and no, sure um um, 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 I, I lost my train of thought, so I'm just going to pass it back to you until it comes back. To okay, me. cool. Well, <laughs> but, uh, back to the Fomka and Josh Hartnett thing. Like, the, the, from top to bottom, it doesn't work for me from the beginning because from the get-go, and I remembered this going in and I watched it with like a, you know, like a, 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 a fisheye lens almost just to yeah. kind of like go like, okay, what bothers me about this? I remember I didn't like it, but, but why? Like, let me give it a chance. Let me see why. And it's because... The whole time, I it it, I, I, it it couldn't decide what it was. Like the fact, number one, from the, from the get go, the fact that she's introduced as 
essentially an inept teacher. And, <laughs> and again, if that's the direction we're going in, then commit to it. Have her, like, meet with the faculty before, you know, like, the invasion or before she, you know, like, gets recruited or, or something. And have them, like, kind of establish that... She's new at this. Like, this, she's, this is her first year. She's still on shaky ground. She doesn't even know if she wants this to be her career or something like that. Like, you know me, I am the queen of headcanon. And this movie just demands too much because <laughs> there's too many possibilities. But she's just kind of standing up there literally going, so, um, <laughs> everyone, <laughs> Robinson so and i'm like it's this your first day and do you even want to be or or have you been doing this too long and you're just tired of it like i mean what is her fucking story i didn't, Why I didn't is get the sense so easily intimidated yeah i didn't get the sense yeah. that this was that she was over it it just seemed like she was just very <laughs> very timid very mousy just like <gasps> and it's just like and not a good casting choice like great casting no. choice for the character that we see later yeah. The one who confronts him in the uh, the quad or in the parking lot, sure. but as like this this teacher who's just like you know holding her books up like, does anyone like does anyone have any questions? <laughs> she raises her own hand. I, I mean, know. she 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 understands the assignment. Like I love Funk and yes. but it was just like as to, to play this version of it, it just seemed like a miscast. Um, so. It was, I mean, I'm glad that she was there. I'm glad that there is this this versatility of, of just, like, great actors in the cast. But it, yes. I, I understand what you mean. Like, the, the, the whole character and the relationship is just, it's, it doesn't make any fucking sense. I know. I just, I, and again, like, if they could have just committed in any direction, like, what is the dynamic of this re- teacher-student relationship? Yeah. Let's just move in that direction. Because also, because it is an ensemble piece, we need clarity. We need to keep it yeah. moving. So, I mean, because we need to keep it moving. Okay, just keep things crisp and clear and let it. Let me know. Like, Okay, so I know what the dynamic is there. So the next time we see them, I know what he said to her and I know how she feels about it and what... May, and let's see what she, how she's going to handle it. And yeah. it never satisfied, especially because I, I will just say, uh, in watching, because I, I, my sister was a huge Fomke Jensen fan through the '90s and the 2000s, and yeah. said her name often, but always called her Fomke Jensen. And I think it also because when Fomka speaks in interviews, if you see her, like she's got a little bit of like a, a, an accent. She's, I don't know particularly where she hails from. Okay, she's Dutch. Yeah, I mean, I don't so know. If she's I, I knew, I knew. Yeah, I knew it was gonna like be that pro, or Swedish yeah. or Welsh yeah. or something. But so one of those, one of those, you know, accents. Uh, uh, and uh, mo- most of the people, when they have a J, like you know, it won't be Jensen. It'll be Jensen, or it'll be yeah. not Johan, but Johan. You know, like things like that. Right. So I, I just wanted to see her say it. <laughs> like, what does she do? And she yeah. says Fomka Jensen. So okay, but I also got to watch the rest of an interview she did somewhat recently talking about just like sexism in her line of work in the industry and she spoke with such you know personal profundity that it actually hurt me that she didn't get to kind of like bring that you know like an opportunity and that that, by and large that's how I feel about like basically everybody in the cast younger actors and older actors I feel like you've got a wealth of talent at your disposal give them something to really sink their teeth into and give them a moment to really just kind of like shine and execute something in a way that's that's memorable and effective because i feel like a lot of time for me was wasted particularly that's why because i don't really respond much to the first half of the movie especially because so much of what i feel is spent kind of like observing the students and their dynamics with each other in a way that doesn't really move the plot along for me it's i mean exposition is important but I'm kind of missing vital things. Like, as even, okay, even the way we move from, like, that opening, like, okay, the coach with the kids, and then mysterious stranger behind him, and then we go to, like, the whole BB and Piper, and, uh, oh, I always wanted to do that, and all that. Okay, you got me. Then, <laughs> the next thing we move to is, like, you know, like, the, 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 the smash cut of, like, all of the... The kids... Oh, I'll get back to the smash cut in a second, because that's another thing, the editing in this movie. But, okay. Introducing all the kids and their dynamics and everything like that. All I wanted to do was see a teacher teaching a class and the students kind of like noticing, oh my God, they're different. (laughs) You know, like how does Piper Laurie 
address the drama club now. <laughs> How does BB New Earth, you know, like I, I felt like we got there a little too late. Like my interest was peaked. Like, let me see the differences. Let me see the impact on the kids. Let's get this ball rolling. So yes, it moves quickly. But I, I, again, with that, and I, I, I don't know if I can blame uh, Robert Rodriguez or the Weinsteins or everybody, <laughs> but the the clip that we're moving it's like well you're focusing on you're not focusing on the things that i need to satisfy me as as an audience member that's how i yeah. feel yeah it's the the movie is very plot forward like it's just it's that's all that's moving forward there's not like a lot of like in terms of exposition like the the way that this is paced so well because it just kind of comes about as the movie goes along there's not these like long scenes of of people talking. Actually, I think the 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 part where I I don't check out, but I kind of do become a little bored is when they leave the school the next day, like the second day, yeah. and they drive to Zeke's garage, yeah. I guess, and then they're in there, and because that's where they're just like, this is what this. It feels like they're there for a really long time, and mm -hmm. the like the as great as like the the sniff test is, it's just it is like a a blatant ripoff of. John Carpenter's The Thing, but that's the one, that's probably my least favorite part of the movie because it just, it slows right the fuck down at that point. And it had been very uh, plot forward at that point. Like just the momentum had been moving along that I didn't, this is not a movie that I necessarily need character from. That's why, you know, this, the thing that I was suggesting, maybe if we just followed Casey's story, that could have been that movie, but it's not the movie we have. And, you know, I, sure. I appreciate the movie that we have because um, it just felt more like they had this idea of doing The Breakfast Club. Yeah. But just like having all these characters represent those that like the the jock, the princess, mm -hmm. the the outcast or what, the basket case, sorry, um, sure. the geek, the the rebel. Which is the funny because then it's yeah. the criminal, the criminal, which is funny because then you have uh, Mary Beth, the transfer student, who's just like, mm. well, who, she, she doesn't fit into that equation. So maybe that should have been a clue to let us know that it, it was oh. her. But um, yeah, they definitely, I, I think, fell back on, on the laurels of just like the stereotypes of these characters to, to mm. kind of move through the story. Because by the end of the movie... Every single one of them goes through a transformation and we don't necessarily see the the progress as it goes. Like like I said, like the movie gets to the, the last scene and all of a sudden Josh Hartnett is now playing football. He's now he's now he's now the jock. And it's just like, where was that D did that come in? Because maybe he had that argument or when she approached him in the in the quad and 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 was got aggressive with him. Um, we have the whole thing with like Clea Duval uh, Stokely because it's it's kind of really pushed on us that she's now all of a sudden interested in in Stan. Like they're, obviously they have yeah. their like little moments where they keep bumping into each other and just in, like right. hurling insults. Mostly she's hurling insults, um, yeah. and then she's just. <laughs> suddenly just checking him out the next day and Mary Beth is like, mm. you should go, you know, talk to him and pushes pushes her on. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe the alien is a good, you know, person. <laughs> just like, they, they really, she really wanted the best for everyone. But I mean, I definitely get that. I mean, I, yeah. I mean, it, 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 in a misguided kind of way that I've already addressed. She, but as far as the intention on, on the part of this alien being like, yeah. This is for your own good, like that. Yeah, yeah, I got that. Yeah. I mean, it's I definitely. think that Mary Beth, like she was obviously selfishly motivated. It's just like, what's best for me, and if I can get what's best for me by convincing you that this is best for you, then, then great. But yeah, we didn't. I mean, we got a, maybe a little bit more insight into Clea Duval than mm. um, Delilah, who's just like, who's just a nasty bitch cunt. <sighs> Uh, throughout the entire movie, homophobic, oh, just really, just just a very unpleasant person. Yeah, and I mean, awesome. Jordana Brewster is like obviously like super cute and charming, and she infuses as much into that character as possible. But just, but, but at the end of the day, it's just like you <laughs> suck. And I don't. By the end of the movie, that she, like I read her kind of being interested in him at that point is more just because like oh he's 
famous now where he has clout and now she's right. attracted to him. Um, but there's but, really, but, yeah, no, it just, it just, it didn't feel earned. Uh, it just in terms of, of, of where they came, where they started <laughs> and where they end up. And I think the only characters that really, it made sense for them to have gotten from point A to point B is Casey, because he kind of, in his own, even if no one saw it and it's more just like, is it, is it myth or is it uh, reality? He kind of tapped into what he was capable of and knew like, okay, I'm actually kind of a badass and and mm. I can have more confidence in my life and yada, yada, yada. And Stan, because he just decided, <laughs> I want to quit the football team and, and <laughs> focus on my academics. So at least their transformations made sense, but everyone else, it was kind of, uh, uh, kind of forced, we'll say. Yeah, um, I, I again, like when you try to kind of like throw things in a blender together and go like let's do something that's like body snatchers but also um the thing but also breakfast club like like but may in the in the in the execution of it like is there a better path forward like is it is 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 that serving your story the best to have it as an ensemble among the kids anyway and not just have it like be an unlikely friendship between maybe two or three characters that we can actually you know kind of like hook up to like um, a, I, I like a chucky to... like a like uh <laughs> dev and jake and lexi well or even like yeah. it's funny because here we're like uh <laughs> yeah exactly like actually yeah. you know what oh, oh my heart but okay that would have been great but even like no it's true i love them i mean I even know. though like you know some, some problems that we discussed in season two but anyway yeah. um i still have to start season three anyway with this movie um ironically <laughs> the two scenes that you've kind of like you know sunk like stones you know they don't appeal to you as much because they are just ripping they're cribbing off other movies that do it better yeah. but i guess because they were trying to copy other movies i leaned in a little bit better because i thought them copying dynamics of other scenes in other movies was more effective for me than like what they were trying to do on their own <laughs> because yeah. the scene between clea duvall and Elijah Wood in the library when they're having that meta conversation was what was probably the most compelling exchange up till that point for me, just because finally I believed that these two people would have this conversation at this particular point in the movie. And there mm -hmm. and it wasn't just I mean, they gave great performances. Everybody I think everybody did fine with their performances. They did the best they could. But that particular moment worked because the movie kind of got them there and yeah. and everything that both of them were saying i was like yeah you'd be saying that and yeah you would be retorting with that otherwise i just felt like the movie did a terrible job of creating an environment where these students would rely on each other like this and mm -hmm. as the action progresses it makes it harder for me to follow because but the next thing that i liked was the the scene with the pens where they were doing the test and again because yeah. it's in the thing i mean but that at least part... at least something was at stake you know at least there yeah. was something at play that i could kind of like identify oh okay this is yeah. interesting anyway. yeah i'll lament that like that part of that scene was excited but but the the lead into that of just like the the autopsy on the mouse and, and all that and just sort of oh, these God. conjectures that everyone was coming to based on nothing. That's and that was true. another thing. Like we're talking about like the meta-ness of, of everything because like Stokely is just like, she's citing, she's, she, I mean, Casey's more citing like movies. She's citing books. Like she's more of like the literary person uh, because mm -hmm. she reads, we see her reading. But there's, I, uh, I saw, it was actually listed as a goof um, that she says to Mary Beth when she asked her, how does Body Snatchers end? And she's mm. just like, well, we uh, we die, we lose, they win. When that's actually um, the movies, those mm -hmm. like the, any of the, the original or the one from 1978, or I think there was a newer one, those have much more like darker... Uh, endings to them where it's it's more so spelled out that like the human race is doomed whereas in the actual mm. book the the humans did actually succeed in the end and were able to fight off the aliens so mm. it's that maybe suggests that kevin williamson wasn't really like completely uh up to, up to par with with his references but <laughs> it's yeah there, it's just like it was just more so it was the scream thing and you would know you know like the wine scenes were just like 
Make it scream. Make it scream. Right, of course. And, of course. And, and I mean, that might be, like, where I see the diminishing returns here now. Um, because at the time, like, anything that was scream adjacent was just like, oh, my gosh, yeah, yeah, like, more of this. I love that. I want to see more of this. And of I still have, like, fond memories of this. And I, and I think the, the, the parts that I do enjoy about this is the, the pacing and just how much fun it, it is. Um, but yeah, I feel like it was to this movie's detriment that they were kind of more so focused on recreating an aesthetic where it's not that like scream, like the concept doesn't lend itself to what they're doing here, but it definitely needed a lot more uh, attention and time to iron out wrinkles because if this was rushed, like if they had, if they had the time uh, if Kevin had had the time to to write this or redraft what the original story was, and then if they did have like someone come in and po- do a polish on the script or whatever, there would have been these questions like, what are what is the aliens deal? Like, is it a hive mind? Is it more of like this id uh, creature? Um, what's going on with these characters, sort of thing? Uh, and I think that that's that's probably where this movie suffers is because those weren't questions that were asked. The logic is not there. The characters, while they're fun externally, um, there's there's really nothing beneath the surface. I mean, the the, the cast, by and large, when they were being interviewed about it, I mean, it, it's promotional, so of course they're going to yeah. be singing the praises of it. But it did seem genuine. It did seem like everybody was really, really happy to be where they were and grateful to be working off of one another. Um and I even get a sense of that while they're working on screen. Yeah. I don't feel like there's a disconnect uh, when the actors are, you know, working, when they're acting uh, with each other. And they, But they all kind of referenced uh, time and again this style that Robert Rodriguez was implementing with the movie that, you know what, I do feel, um, even though I kept feeling i kept feeling like there was no sense of like identity <laughs> ironically enough in a movie that's about like robbing you of your identity i kept thinking like there's no real sense of identity here this movie could be any movie but one thing that i didn't even realize until they mentioned it they kept uh mentioning this restlessness and i think i was just kind of like attributing that to the pace as it was going yeah. but a sense of restlessness and unease there is and, and as much as i just kind of like criticize this movie for not just kind of like settling in and not just kind of like letting me kind of easily get to know people at the same time visually uh the the way the camera just kind of like moves along with the characters i do feel a sense that we're we are you know never really settled i wish it could have been done in in a way that was a little bit more effective because i think it just mildly irritated me as opposed to putting me on edge in a way that is cinematically effective. But... I love the moment where um, <laughs> Casey, like the, um, fuck, I'm just going to look up her name, but the uh, Piper Laurie, because she was <laughs> she was my favorite of the faculty. And oh. I, I was upset that we did not get to see more of her. Absolutely. Um, but uh, it was the scene where she's kind of in the office and explaining to, oh, uh, Mrs. Olson. Uh, mm-hmm. Mrs. Olson is explaining to Stan and Casey about yeah. uh, the the one teacher's condition and having cancer right, right. and just being like, you know, uh, can you please have some discretion? And mm. uh, Stan's like, yeah, I understand. She's like, Casey? And he's photographing the coach who's standing in the sprinklers. In sprinklers and she's yeah. like, Casey? Casey? And then he turns and it does that like camera jolt like t- closer into right. her face. And then a quick yes. zoom out. And mm-hmm. <laughs> there's something about that that's just so <laughs> so like old school, so campy that I, I love yeah. that particular moment. Yeah, if they could have like moved in, in it, I, I wish, because it, it feels like it's too kind of rooted in a kind of realism for it to be full camp, which I would have actually really loved if they would have just gone full camp with it. Like, yeah. we are, you know, broad stroke, not maybe not caricatures, but characters who yeah. are, you know, like, mm-hmm. I'm the nerd and I'm the, and then, you know, and, uh, <laughs> and played to the to the back of the house, as it were, a little bit more, or made it really earnest and really, you know, like realistic and heartbreaking so that like as these kids are getting picked off, I'm going, no, I liked them. Because instead I'm just kind of like, oh, that's a shame. Yeah. Uh, one, one thing I do want to point out, though, that I thought actually worked to the movie's benefit and I wish there could have been 
more built upon this. It was the exchange between, I always call him outside Providence. His name's Stan, the jock kid who wants oh, to walk Sean, away from it all. Sean Hattesey. Okay, yeah. I always call yeah. him outside Providence because I think that's the first movie I ever saw him in. Yeah. Uh, where Alec Baldwin call, plays his dad and calls him an ass bag the whole movie. Mm. That's all I remember Never about seen it. it. But yeah. okay. Uh, <laughs> he was in it. He was cute. Um, but uh, he, uh, uh, he is talking to the coach uh, at the pool. Um, about like how he wants to walk away and the coach is just kind of like okay great with a big smile on his face and he's just kind of like really you're not going to like ride me or something like that you know like you know really like you know rake me over the coals over like yeah. this decision and he's just kind of like what kind of human being would I be if I yeah. did that and that to me was a much better example of why this movie's big bad would believe its own way is the path to peace equality and therefore prosperity yeah. and everything like that because and, and that's what's even more unnerving is like you know like here you've got this rageaholic coach who now all of a sudden is standing there grinning at you that is truly unnerving yeah. that is something that is truly going to you know and make he, you kind of wonder what's going on with yeah that. and hit and he was just playing that up like he that yeah. was like a really that's a good example of like camp when it's done well of just the way that he he yeah. he kind of played that because I don't I don't see that's the thing like I wish that we had more uh, interviews and stuff just to go on like and just like retrospectives yeah. to hear Robert Rodriguez speak to this because I would like to know specifically what like Robert Patrick was doing with this role and why his character um, you know w w coming off of being like this the rageaholic and then just being like super nice in almost like just a creepy way. Um, like what was the decision to do that? Cause like, even like during the game when they're like just pummeling the other team, he's having these moments. He's just like, yeah, did you see that? And it's, and a lot of that is, was, I remember from the trailers cause they just like really yeah. focused, uh, heavily on, on his character. So yeah, I'd say like him and, uh, Piper Laurie, I think were the best teachers. I, I really wanted to spend more time they with totally them. They totally were. And they, yeah. and they got to interact with each other. Like a lot of the, a lot yeah. of the teachers didn't. They were the ones well, that, like, they, because they have the scene when they're in there, when what's their yeah. faces are in the closet, and they're just like, there's only so much time now. Like, like they're talking about the plan, <laughs> and it's just like, oh, this is exciting. While they're like hiding in there, like, what's going on? Well, and their exchange is the reason why, because I had a question about, like, because I saw the, the, the older teacher, the one who goes in the shower and has her scalp pulled off and everything like that. Yeah. And then I see Piper Laurie. Okay, that was another thing. I felt like there was a missed opportunity. Sorry, 100 different topics at once. But <laughs> when Piper Laurie is telling Elijah, not telling Elijah, she's telling uh, uh, Outside Providence that um, you know, like she, had she had cancer and she was on a lot of medication and that's why blah, 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 blah. blah. And I, it would have been nice if like one of them at some point would have walked away from the situation going like why is the drama teacher telling us about what why shouldn't this be like the principal saying like but she's like obviously like i guess maybe a little bit further along in her integration or whatever her 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 you yeah. know mutation her 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 osmosis of personality that <laughs> of course she's going to be kind of like a little bit more in the lead because she's a little bit more ahead uh in her transition so i mean just i mean little thing like that but anyway what I really, really appreciated actually seeing the behind the scenes thing, I saw one take, and I, I, I'm assuming an early take, yeah. of when Piper Laurie and the coach move into the room while Elijah and Jordana are hiding in the closet. And they're at the water cooler getting the water. There's one take where they're getting the water, and you, and you can see the whole crew around them and stuff like that, and they both just drink. I, I don't even remember if they toast or something, but then they both just drink in unison. Yeah. And then they both finish at the same time and they just stand there and stare at each other with kind of like these placid <laughs> grins on their faces. Well, she, and, she like full on throws the water in her face. Well, that's what I was yeah. going to say is like in this take, they're not doing that. They're just yeah. drinking solemnly and then kind of staring at each other. And they just stare at each other indefinitely and Robert Rodriguez just lets the camera roll. And then finally he just goes, cut. And everybody erupts in laughter because it's so, yeah. you know, uh, 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 just strange. And yeah. then it made me think like, oh, they didn't, it made me realize, oh, I really, really like that moment where Piper Laurie just chucks the water yeah. <laughs> into her face. We don't even see her face. We just see her from behind. And, and I wondered if that was her idea or his idea, but... It was, yeah, it was like things like that. I feel like it would like have been hers. Because she, she would have been I like, hope. I'm just going to do that. 
but yeah, this is and this is an example shit. of where the editing was terrible because like she's full on splash it was like her hair uh went flying back yes and then, and then when we see it from the front it's like dry um, yeah and her face so just isn't i mean maybe she the, absorbed it all by then I don't, oh, <laughs> but again the continuity yeah. i shouldn't be working this hard um. no that's true <laughs> Um, I mean, I, I don't want to, okay. I mean, I, I, I feel like I haven't been like completely negative, but there's, there are some, uh, scenes in this movie that I actually really love. And, uh, I think the standout for me is, is the final confrontation, uh, in the locker room when you have the naked mm. Mary Beth walking down that row and you just see the <laughs> shadows of the tentacles across mm. the room there's something about that that just works on a whole nother level mm. that you know like could be like attributed to to camp like if this movie did lean in more to that and just kind of like l like went for the crazy it sure. you know we could have had a lot of things like that that, that really great. worked well there was another moment where when um they uh put that the thing that casey finds in the water tank and it like mm. splits in two or whatever, but then Stokely has her hand on the glass and the thing mm. comes up to her right. and it kind of mimics her yeah. with like the little yeah. tentacle things. That was cool. Yeah. To just to show like that, that like that's their intention is that they're trying to uh, replicate us or just like, well, that's the thing. They're not replicating us because they're not pod people, but at least just show that there's like, they're trying to bond with us. Um, yeah. And, you know, I thought that that was pretty cool. So there's just yeah, like little... Of, Little nuances like that, about, just about the, the yeah. alien that I thought were fascinating and they just right. didn't uh, lean as much into it. But that, yeah, that, that last scene in the locker room, just like the, the shadows and everything about it, just amazing. Yeah, um, I mentioned, I'll, I'll, I'll have one more criticism and then I'll, I'll, I'll praise something else. <laughs> okay, but, uh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> but no, cause it, just because I mentioned it before and anybody who's listening, I don't want them to go like, wait, what, smash cut? What did he say? So smash cut, that's what I wanted to address also. Mm. There were just like two really strange edits to me that, I mean, the movie needs to keep going and everything like that. But, you know, like uh, there, there, there's a part of me that's just kind of like, okay, well, you just wanted... You just wanted to make it go, and it's when uh, BB Newworth in the, again in, the, in that opening scene is like running towards the door, and she's trying to get the thing on un unchained, so she can get out, and then she has to put the chain back on. All of that stuff that could have been like incredibly tense, if it would have been, happened in real time, but instead we kind of jump cut from her. she's inside. Somehow the chain is off. She's out, and the chain is back on. And then she. Gets I never. Stabbed. I mean, yeah, that whole thing. They they yada 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 through that, uh, because yeah. I, I'd always thought like, how did she just like? First of all, I mean, I guess that like, he put the chain on the door when she went to the <laughs> office in the at the first one. But yeah, right. like, because she has to take that off, and yeah. then go through the door and have the chain with her, and then put it on the other side. Yeah. And I think that I mean I'm not disrespecting Robert Rodriguez. Like I have not seen as many Robert Rodriguez movies as I have, like, like Wes Craven movies. But mm. this is an instance where, like, if Wes Craven had directed this, like, if he, if this was, like, a, a, a Wes Craven, Kevin Williamson vehicle, I think mm. that these would have been things where, where Wes would have just, like, really leaned into the moment of just getting to the suspense of that. And he, and Wes being Wes would have looked at the logic of the script and been like, no, that doesn't work at all. Yeah, with Robert Rodriguez, I have seen, um, I've seen El Mariachi, I've seen Desperado, I've seen From Dusk Till Dawn, of course, and yeah. I've seen Planet mm -hmm. Terror. I like all those movies better than this one, <laughs> but I suspect, <clears throat> I, I, I can't even blame him because also, I mean, he's not the editor, and I don't know if he had final cut on this movie. Yeah. I, I, I don't know how much control he had over it versus like i mean apparently like the spy kids movies are especially once you get to the second one and on like they're just off the charts crazy in in <laughs> wonderful ways that i probably yeah. really want the faculty to be um so i mean I, yeah i don't blame him i think it's more because there was another jump cut that i wanted to address also just elijah wood when he's on the bus with Jordana Brewster, and she's kind of like trying to seduce him into the one of us, one of us moment. While the moment. team is breaking in, yeah. Right, and then he, Elijah Wood, we're talking like, you know, topping out at five, six. generously, five, yeah. six generously. Yeah. Jumps, like leaps to the top of the bus <laughs> and pushes his way through like the little emergency hat exit hatch up there 
in no time. And, and again, like, th th there could have been some real tension with him, like, jumping up and trying to boost himself up. And I could have been like, kid, come on. But no, because we have to keep the movie going. Yeah. Again, like, just missed opportunities that I don't think Robert Rodriguez would have opted for in the first place but maybe it's just it, uh, and i do yeah. i there's a part of me that agrees with you i, I think that's a, those are battles west craven might have like really he would have gone he would have won gone especially especially after like yeah. doing two scream movies um yeah. I, I i would i mean i don't want this to sound <laughs> bad but for robert rodriguez because i do love this movie the way it is but i just know that it, it, it would be so much better and i would be interested to see a version of that but the the thing with like the Weinsteins is that it, it always seemed like there were the people that they had were kind of like on contract so like it, it yeah. could very well be possible that Robert Rodriguez uh, had like a three picture deal or something and right. and it was one of those things where just like well you have to have something else and it just like if you don't choose we're gonna give you something and he's like okay how about this alien movie or whatever right. and maybe that's why we haven't heard him speak about it or just like any like really anything in the last 25 years from from anyone um yeah. i would love to hear something i would love to hear people talk about this but it, it, i don't even know if this is really um uh like advertised i know that in the in the marketing they did say like from the director of this and this but right right i can't remember if on the poster it says a robert rodriguez film or if it does it doesn't have the same gravitas that like a west craven film uh, no, scream he, he or wasn't whatever. A, yeah. He wasn't a horror meister quite yeah. yet, but um, um, like, so, like but, but where I, is he I, now? But I yeah. agree um, that it's just like it doesn't feel like this is probably his most understated film, mm -hmm. uh, if you could call it that, because it doesn't it, it it doesn't have his like signature style to it as much. Yeah. Um, but I don't want to say that he phoned it in like that. I don't, I don't no. think about that. I think that way at all, but it definitely does feel like this is a movie that was wrought with some form of studio, uh, meddling on, on some form. Yeah, or I, I agree. It feels like a, a kind of studio. I mean, when in doubt, blame the studio, but of course, yeah. like, I mean, because, uh, artists don't make decisions like that, you know, like, and I, and like I said, like, I, 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 I like all of Robert Rodriguez's films that I've seen yeah. so much more than this one that I don't even really kind of feel like his signature on it. Aside from, there are some things that I like, like one thing that I wanted to mention, uh, when you were talking about just like the, the shadow of the creature, I actually really like this creature. I like the, um, once it takes to the water, again, I just kind of like saw the possibilities of like, look how quickly it swims. Whenever you put mm -hmm. your movie monster in water and it takes to it like it belongs there, yeah. and we don't, the tension shoots right fucking up. And I yeah. just kind of wish we could have spent a little more time with that. But there was a cringe moment for me that worked to the movie's benefit when uh, Clay Duvall falls and gets her bloody mouth on the pool yeah. tile. I winced. I was like, oh, 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 oh. This movie's girl. pretty tame when it comes to yeah. violence and blood. So that is a moment where, you know, they, like, it, it, it's odd that it's in there. Because yeah. <laughs> there's, like, a lot of, there's, a, like, even, like, at the beginning when he puts the pencil in her hand, like, that's, that you yeah. could tell, like, they, they trim down a lot. Um, yeah. But that could also be MPAA, uh, in fact, it prob probably was. But um, yeah, there's there's some interesting CGI in this movie too. But honestly, it does not bother me. I do. I agree. No. I like the look of the the alien because it is very specific. I love the way that like she melts into this alien form, and I love it even more when she that whole thing where she dives into the the pool. But then like mm -hmm. as she's swimming, she just kind of takes her human form again and steps out. That's yeah. a really good shot as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, memorable. Yeah. yeah, I thought it worked. I thought it worked well. Um, I also, there was, there. I kept again. I kept wondering like, what would an alternate version of this cut or like a director's cut of this sequence be when they're in the the classroom lab, basically with John Stewart's character. Who? Okay, just sidebar. Saw John Stewart in his interview for this movie, and oh my god, he looked so beautiful. This was like. Right on the cusp, I think, of him taking over for The Daily Show from K Craig Kilborn, the initial uh, host. And um, 
I have always had a thing for Jon Stewart. So I'm just watching him talk and I'm like, ha ha ha. And I don't have one of those swooning moments in this movie. He walks in. He's another case of like a man like walking in after he's been overtaken by the thing. He could have been a, you know, hey, you know, how's it going? <laughs> you know, just smooth as fuck. And it would have been so gratifying to me. Come on, give the boys, the gay boys something. Come on. But, <laughs> but, um. I, I just watching kind of like uh, the thing being like dropped in the tank and watching like all of those tendrils come out and then like also watching like them handle it again it it, it straddled kind of like more uh, 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 theatrical <laughs> flourishes like when Josh Hartnett breaks the 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 paper cutter like that big yeah. huge like metal thing off of it and immediately mm. starts going all samurai and everything like that and I was just kind of like wait what <laughs> that's ridiculous and then I yeah I, I, but again could have used more of it like like, like if, is that the movie we're in I just had a question mark over my yeah. head but I um, guess I guess you and can it's a shame that he didn't get to live Thregan for that yeah right. <laughs> actually you know what yeah, yeah. more gratifying oh, um well he did sad. i think that he did survive because at the in the end credits um oh. as they're doing like the pictures uh, you know like the like the scream thing with all the faces at the end and the, the names oh. uh he's yeah. in there and he has an eye patch and his hand is all bandaged he has like a donut in his in his hand because he has no fingers and he <laughs> drops the donut <laughs> So, I mean, going by the canon, like if Fonka Jensen was decapitated <laughs> and then her head sort of like reattached to itself and now oh. she's got like a scar along her neck that she has to wear this scarf for the rest of her life. <laughs> He's now lost an eye and has no fingers. I forgot about and that. that. Yeah. I didn't see it, I don't know. No, and that's the, that's the thing. Like there's no, that's the thing that pisses me off here is that there's no, yeah. there's no consequences. There's no reprimand for these kids actions like they're just yeah. out willy-nilly like causing bodily harm to humans who have yeah, parasites yeah. in them but that's going to affect them after they're no longer a parasite and like even like the scene that we're like the 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 drug test scene everyone is so like gung-ho to shoot delilah in the head they're like shoot her in the head and it's just like you just fucking had this conversation that all of these people are not in control of their bodies and they're going like it's the black christmas 2019 bullshit all over again you know remember the end where they like locked all those frat boys in the house that were like being possessed by black ooze and then just burned it right yeah oh, it's God, so fucking barely. ridiculous yeah but yes, um it is. not as egregious here but it's still like it just begs all these questions it's just like they've done this they've like they've caused harm to people People are dead and missing. Like, that's the news report mm -hmm. at the end. Like, several faculty members uh, uh, have disappeared. Uh, reports of aliens. And they're, everyone's just going about their life like, oh, everything's great. It's just, like, happy-go-lucky music. And it's, 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 it's a feel-good ending that does not feel earned. No, it doesn't sense. even feel good. And again, I, I I would have liked it even more if it had been even a little bit more ridiculous if they could have just really leaned into the... You know, I don't know. Like, instead of Palm Kid just kind of shyly waving at him, what if she went, hey! I don't know. Just the energy. Pick different energy. Shift into something crazy. Or, mm -hmm. or don't go for, like, a happy ending at all, actually. I would have preferred that. Or they could have just done the Suspiria ending. Uh, they could have uh, lit the lit the gym on fire and like walked out uh, as Goblin just have plays. Elijah Wood just like running been, away. Off you have been watching the, the faculty. Roll. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that would have been great. See, even that, I mean, that that's, I think that's my issue is I, yeah. I don't think it's the worst movie I've ever seen. I don't even think it's, uh, it's probably not even the worst movie released in 1998. I, I honestly believe that, but I just. It's nowhere they're, near they're, the worst movie. What are you talking about? I'm, I'm saying, I am yeah. agreeing with you. Let me agree with you for crying Thank out loud. You. But Well, I'm not, but you're <laughs> agreeing with me. In terms of like the way that you're phrasing it, which is saying like, well, you're it's not, not even. I, I am obviously leading to a point. The point is, um, uh, there, there's, there's too much that I spend rewriting in my head as I'm watching it, so I never really relax. Not even enough to be restless in a way I think the movie wants me to be. Yeah. So, um, so I don't. Re the only reason I've returned to it like uh, at all in the past couple of years is because I believe. We covered it on the old pod and I did it again for this. I do have to say, revisiting like the first 
act or so yeah. uh, to get some questions answered like I did. Um, like I was wondering like, why are Elijah Wood and Jordana Brewster all of a sudden like hunting around the the faculty lounge, if that's what it is, like, you know, like to try and find clues. And then I went back and I saw, oh, she mentions something about like finding something for a headline. And then there is a deleted scene where she actually, and I, because I don't think she did, I don't think it was included in the theatrical cut, but she, where they're still in the schoolyard and she's like taunting him or whatever. And she does that thing, you know, like, I don't know, at one point where he's like kind of like talking to her and she's like kind of like flirting, but kind of not. And then just like, whatever. But he, where she just kind of like tells him like, bring your camera after school. I, I have a headline and I need, you know, I need to be there. And don't be late. Don't disappoint me, which is so much more her. And I'm like, oh, you're kind of paving the way a little bit more. Like, yeah, clue me into yeah. what's going on instead of just kind of going like, and now they're in here. The whole movie kind of like. And like that well, me. I guess that was just like to, to keep up with the, the, the pace uh, and all that. Right. But there's right. there's the moment in there where she's just being, she's just saying like shit. She's just like. Oh yeah, everyone knows he's an alcoholic. That's why uh, uh, the yeah. uh, the something about the babysitter and like the the wife left with the, the kid or whatever. And right. he's just like, "Wow, you are vile." Like he he says like, you know, um, I I forget exactly what how he phrases. It. He's just like, she's yeah. like, "What? Like you can be a pretty cool human being when you're not being a a grade A." a bitch or something like that yeah, there's a, there's a lot like of that. it's like a word salad and she's just like right. she kind of like smiles and she's just like Casey are you flirting with me and it's just like oh god what who are and you it, you narcissist <laughs> <laughs> and it's and it's also like they're trying to set up that payoff at the end where they yeah. end up together like she might be into him but yeah. I but it does it's, it's, it's not set up properly it doesn't feel I mean, like it's being paid off it feels like it's being contrived for me for my taste. But I do also feel like it's kind of like a the direction. I thought about Freddy versus Jason mm-hmm. where um, I forgot everybody's names, but where, you know, Kelly Rowland is with, uh, you know, the little nerdy kid. And he's just like, see, you bully me to try and build yourself up. But because we're gonna, and, you know, in a way that like. And then later on, she's dancing with him. Come on, let's dance, Linderman. I and get, I'm just like, that would never happen. I get this the reference, like a, but this movie is. Yeah. A, Way better than Freddy vs. Jason. <laughs> <laughs> but is it because this one actually pays it off? Like, look, and they end up together. Like, Linderman got Kelly Rowland. No, no, he didn't. The, <laughs> I like well, Freddy we also, Jason we also have the because he dies. <laughs> and we she also dies. yes, we also have the the scene where we do go home with Casey, and he's got these like photos that he's taken of her, and they're oh just like God. they're just scattered over uh, by his bed there. And that's okay. First of all, like these parents are unhinged. <laughs> oh my god! And Christopher McDonald, my favorite. It's mm. it's it's a bit much uh, with them, but I love how he's th- throwing this tantrum, the dad, and he's just yeah. ripping the room apart and whatever. <laughs> and all Casey says is just like, "Okay, if you just let me call Delilah, I can like clear this up." And he just, like, looks at this wall, and there's, like, all these photos. And all of a sudden, like, that's it. You're grounded. Like, so I'm, I'm confused about yeah. what is he grounded about. Is he grounded for, like, stalking her or taking photos? Or is he grounded for, like, talking back to him? Like, it's just, it's not clear. But this this father is something else. And I love that he they, like, confiscate his his uh, pornography Porn. magazines. And then when he falls out the window, and he and the dad comes out, and he's still got the, the magazine, because, you know, he was probably yeah. going to... Uh, yeah. excuse himself to the totally. the bathroom shortly thereafter. Right. Um, but I, f- I felt like even that scene was like leading into something else because he had the little Spider-Man gizmo thing. It was like he was going to go do some like yeah. reconnaissance and nothing came of that. No. And again, that if it could have been, if he could have been like a little nerdier and a little bit more of like an immersive kind of like, you know, I construct things genius kind of thing, then I, yeah, I, yeah. there would have been a little bit more to endear me and also christopher mcdonald is a character actor i adore and no matter what movie he's in he always he he's he's always it whatever the tone of the movie is like whether he's suited to it perfectly or not he he generally tends to kind of like float and move on his own wavelength but um 
in this one, I, I, I felt like, as uh, Elisha Wood's father, like, oh, you've got Christopher McDonald. He can do so much more than this. Why aren't you? And, and the mom, I don't know who she is, but she, uh, it bothered me because they were doing more than just kind of like crossing their arms and misunderstanding him, but not, but, but, but less than taking up space in a way that actually satisfied me. I'm just saying the same thing over and over again. So I'm <laughs> Did you notice that uh, the police officer was Joel from Scream 2? I did. Yeah. And um, I, I, again, like, okay, so he got recruited. So like now, okay, there's a real threat. Like that, it's only a matter of time before the cops get it too. And we never kind of saw like that. Again, how intimidating would it be? We, well, we saw that there was the roadblock. Then, Remember when they were leaving the school? Yeah, but no, but I mean, like, literally, not even like a roadblock, but just people, like yeah. a row of people. Yeah. That is I mean, so they, much they, more scary to me. Yeah, they, they, again, they yada 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 through a lot because I mean, there was the whole like yeah. the locker, the locker <laughs> search, and then like the police came to the school. They were like following uh, Piper Lori, and they're just like, "What's going on?" Uh, well, the nurse is doing an ear exam. And that requires the police. Mm. Like, they're just like, they're, yeah, right. it's just people, people moving and stuff, but without any like reason behind it or, or further <laughs> investigation. It's just, things are, things are amiss here. Um, I did want to mention, I'm just looking at the trivia here on IMDb. So uh, Delilah was originally written for, or I don't know why it says originally written, but I guess Kevin Williamson may have wanted Charisma Carpenter in mind for the role. Of course. Uh, from, from Buffy. And she turned it down because she felt that the role was too similar to Cordelia on that and show. And not enough. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is, I was going to say, is like Cordelia is such a such a complex character, Cordelia Chase. But yeah. she's she, she has nuance to her. And I don't think that Delilah yeah. has any nuance at all. It also mentions here that Sarah Michelle Gellar uh, turned down a role in the movie. It doesn't specify which one it is. So I'm not sure if it's Delilah. I can't see it being... Stokely, so I think maybe it was Mary Beth, in which case maybe she turned it down because it re- like required her to be nude. Or also, I mean, I think uh, the actress who plays her like does. Uh, I actually think she does a really good job playing her because yeah. uh, the first. I remember the first time I saw it, um, I just thought, "Oh, what a nice girl! Like she's really sweet and encouraging." And all that. So then when I found out that she was the big bad, it was like. Oh wow! I really actually didn't see that coming, and I should have. But I, you know me, I never, I rarely see yeah. this coming unless the bat writing is really bad. But yeah. um, and, and no, um, and and sorry to anybody listening or watching if it seems like I'm being like an, an incredibly negative about this movie. The uh, the ultimate thing is, um, I uh uh uh. uh no, I don't know. Words escape me. I, I'm just sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I really, oh, that's what I was going to say. I uh, Watching the behind the scenes stuff, actually, like, I, even just seeing, like, like Robert, Robert Rodriguez and the actors, like, all, like, on the football field with all of the people in the stands, you know, in the right. bleachers and everything like that. I just thought, like, oh, my gosh, like, making movies is hard. Like, that's a lot of extras to make it look like the entire town has shown up. You have to pay off that thing that you set up in the beginning of the movie and... Get, just rally all of these people for an extended, you know, amount of hours. I have worked, I've done crowd work in stadiums. It is not fun. And um, although I'm sure all of Texas, because they did all of their shooting in Texas, um, you know, must have been like really, really, ha- you know, excited to be like, you know, in a movie or something like that. But, um, and it did, it, you know, it, it looked good on screen, mm-hmm. but it just made me think like, God, making movies is hard. Like, it's really, really hard work. I... This was one where watching the behind the scenes stuff made me appreciate the effort behind it. I just feel like the proof isn't in the pudding, you know, for me at the end of the day. But I can I can appreciate everybody concerned for what they put forth. Yeah. 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 Did you notice the the score was composed by Marco Beltrami? I did at the yeah. end. I think he got a credit at the end, and I was just kind of like, yeah, oh, did. interesting. Yeah. Well, there it were... didn't particularly resonate with me, though. Well, I mean, it's 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 kind of underscored, but there were moments where I'm just like, oh, I, that sounds exactly like in Scream, to the point where right. the, the wine scenes were probably like, just do that thing you did in Scream. Uh, <laughs> like, it's different enough, but there are, there are, like, little beats here and there. It's just like, oh, that's the Scream 
uh, sound whenever <laughs> there's like a, maybe a jump scare or something. Um, so and there was I, one like, salute to the Vertigo score I noticed uh, oh. when they when the, in the beginning when the teachers were on the steps of the school I think when they were all exiting together there was just like this little cue that just reminded me of the I totally know what you're talking about yeah yeah so that was cool mm-hmm. cool <laughs> well it sounds like we're we're uh, rubbing down there anything else uh, you wanted to add about it before before we mosey to the cherry pick? Um, I feel like I've complained enough. I did watch this one video again in like, you know, like an effort to kind of like get as much research as possible yeah. um, from this uh, channel called Nerdstalgic. Uh, and they attributed basically, it was it was all, the basis for it was like why this movie didn't work. The, the heartbreak was uh, Jordana Brewster in an interview uh, that was showcased said, um, they were all expecting to become huge stars from this the way the kids from scream did they thought yeah. it was gonna you know they kept being chatted up like you know by i'm sure the weinsteins and the other you know people who work under them and everything like that that like yeah this is gonna be the biggest thing we're gonna promote it we're gonna do this it's gonna open on christmas it's gonna be huge and then it opened and it was fine like it was yeah. fine but it didn't it did okay it didn't take yeah. the world by storm yeah or anything like yeah. that i mean for, i mean well Jordana Brewster has gone on to be in one of the most successful film franchises of all time with, yeah. with the Fast and Furious movies. So she's she's doing all right. Um, of course. <laughs> uh, I mean, Elijah Wood, obviously, Lord of the Rings, yeah. all that. Like right. he's he's good. He's set for life. Josh Hartnett, um, he just he's he's like what like he could have been a bigger actor. I don't think that he wanted to be. Like he really mm. went down the indie route um, and just like didn't really have much of an interest in doing big studio movies, which is good for him. And I think like the same with Clea Duvall because she's now more behind the scenes. Like I think she's a director. She's a director. She did yeah, that one. She did that one movie uh, with Kristen Stewart, that Christmas one uh, that Dan uh, Levy was in. Oh, okay. Do you remember the, that? I, f- I forget what yeah. it's called. It was. It was. It was I forget it what it's called. Too. I, I never saw it. It was. It was actually. It, I, yeah. I would. Yeah, I would recommend checking it out. A, a non-horror yeah. recommendation as a Christmas movie. I don't know where it's streaming or anything, but um, <laughs> fuck, I wish I re- remembered what it was called. Um, and then I don't. It was I have on no Hulu. Idea. Just look for the Dan Levy movie on on Hulu. It's probably. Well, he's just a. He's just a like the. Funny <laughs> he's a small side part of it, but he yeah. was in all the promotional material. They really wanted you to be think like. You like Shit's Creek? Yeah. <laughs> Look at Dan Levy. He's in there. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the one was yeah. uh, Kristen Stewart and her girlfriend. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. In, gay, in lots of gay. Because she's, cause she's yeah. a lesbian in real life. Uh, yeah, Clea Duval. Uh, I have no idea what Sean Hattesey is, is doing. I know that he was in that Alpha Dog movie. He was the guy who killed the kid. Because it's right. based on a true story. The- he must have gotten tight with Josh Hartnett too, because they did another. I can't remember the name of it, but they did another movie together. At, at least one movie yeah. after this one, so I think they yeah. got along. And, and um, yeah, and Laura Harris, the one you mentioned who plays mm-hmm. the blonde Mary Beth. I don't know, but she's Canadian. She's. Um, it looks like she's worked consistently. Oh, there's a gap here, but um, I remember her. I used to watch Twenty Four. Um, oh, okay. And she was, yeah. she was like, you know, just like played this, um, like cute little, like blonde, like she was getting married or whatever. I probably shouldn't spoil it, but she, um, for anyone who wants to watch it, but she, she turned out to like just play another villain, and it was just like, oh, Ooh. that's what she's, she's good at. She just like plays these roles where she's all innocent and unsuspecting, and just turns out to be something else. But uh, that's her wheelhouse. It is. Um, <laughs> So and then of course like the main cat like the like the the teachers and, and all that like uh, every every yeah. single single one of them I mean that was the thing they were famous back then and I feel like most of them still are if they're if they are alive at this point so mm-hmm. it's it's a it's a pretty solid cast um, even what's his face is in it uh, in the bit role with uh, with. Uh, Joaquin Phoenix's sister, I'm assuming. It was oh, Summer, Summer Phoenix. Phoenix and John Abrahams. Yeah. Who John Abrahams from <laughs> Scary Movie and also House of Wax, yeah. which we just did. He, he, um, he played the the character of Dalton. Remember yes. everyone's favorite Dalton. Like not Dalton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
he's i guess they're the they're credited as like the fuck you couple or some, something like that they got the, like the final bow in the end credits yeah. like curtain call you know with all the with them coming out. i thought that was so cute because i definitely recognized him i've seen summer phoenix in slc punk which actually has um uh 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 I, and I'm just like, you know, I just said it. Christopher, the, you know, uh, Elijah Wood's dad. What? McDonald, thank you. Yeah. God, I'm tired. But yeah, Christopher McDonald, uh, he was in SLC Punk 2, and she played like the girl who turns Matthew Lillard around in that movie. But okay, um, never seen it. So, But I, I didn't recognize her until they said her name. Also, Usher in this movie. Oh, yeah, we totally this, forgot about. It. Well, that's the thing. Like, <laughs> Usher was he's like, barely heavily yeah. promoted. Like, he's on some of like the posters and stuff. They ran this ad. They I guess they were doing promotion with Tommy Hilfiger. So there was like there was oh, commercials yes. and stuff and I I distinctly yeah. remember those cuz I I remember seeing like the like the, the previews for the movies and I saw these Tommy Hilfiger ads and I'm like, "Oh, is that Josh yeah. Hartnett?" Cuz I'd already known him from H2O <laughs> and and course, you know, being gay. And yeah. um, I was just like, <laughs> you oh, gay. it's yeah. It's like, oh, this is a faculty tie-in. Um, yeah. And apparently, there's because there's eight cast members in that. There's a another female actress in there. I forget her name. I think she's Quincy Jones's daughter, not Rashida, but oh. um, uh, the other one. And she okay. had a role in the movie, and they just completely cut it out. And she can still be seen in the in like the science lab when like oh they're God. bringing in the thing but yeah it was just like this entirely uh additional character that i guess was and uh, in, in in the movie in the same scale that usher was just like the, the oh, same size of a role because his role even seemed like it was whittled down uh quite a Miniscule. bit Miniscule. i completely forgot or that he was, he was even in this yeah no, the only reason I remembered was uh, he was in one of the interviews for the promotional material, and he was grinning from ear to ear. He was so happy. He was just like, yeah. everybody's really nice. You know, <laughs> this is my first movie. I think it was his yeah. first movie. Uh, it, I think it was Jordana Brewster's first, too. Was, she yeah. was talking about working with Elijah Wood and how much she loved like having him as a scene partner. I guess she got cast before him and uh yeah. they didn't know whether they were going to get him or not and once they they confirmed with her yes we we got him he's i like how they hotted so him up at the end by like putting product in his hair <laughs> he had a little bit of makeup on too like he just just like he's he's hot now. i mean if elijah wood is your thing he's hot throughout the entire movie like oh but that was another thing like i remember even like the the, the introduction of the nerd factor for him the fact that like not even just like the uh, the execution of the bullying, but the aftermath when he's just kind of in the stall, stuffing those Kleenex like up his bloody nose and everything like that, almost in a fetal position. I was like, oh my god! How did he baby. get there? How did he get that? That was like the the, the <laughs> another continuity editing thing because he was out <laughs> on the fucking grass out front. She walked in. Mary Beth walked in because remember they exchanged a glance. She walked yes. in. And then we saw her looking at Josh Hartnett down another hall and then he goes into the bathroom does the exchange yeah. with those those two punks and then yeah. we see Casey in the stall it's just like there he did not have time to get there don't bullshit me Robert Rodriguez come on <laughs> Maybe it was a red herring to try and make us think, oh, is he the alien? Because yeah. he can, you know, <laughs> yeah. and he, he, can, he, he can transport himself from, from one location to another. Yeah, I don't totally. know. I don't and, know. The, and, and, and that's another thing. This is technically a, a final boy movie and we don't get enough of those. Yeah, so. that bugged me. I don't like final boys as a rule. Like, oh, even that's... if they're bullied, I'm just... Well, because no, I thought Cleo Duvall I... was at least going to be, like, linking arms with him or something like that. Like, the two... When they were having that discussion, I thought, like, oh, okay, these are the two misfits. I like it. I'd like for the two of them to, like, progress. I would have, would have much rather had she him just wasn't her She wasn't developed well enough. Like, I don't... I don't oh. have a problem with final... I think fewer and far between, but I, I feel like we, especially at that time, were getting so many horror movies where the final girl was just so pedestrian <laughs> that it's like i'm fine with having a oh. final boy in in a scenario and he and th that's the thing he was still um oppressed you know he still kind of like filled the mold of like what uh a, you know a hero of one of these movies should be so at the end of the day it all worked out and i'm and you know it doesn't bother me the way that it bothers you so no, he so, was fine. Huh. But Claire Duval, I'm a Claire Duval stan also. So, I mean, I mean, I, 
I got such a crush on her when I saw But I'm a Cheerleader. She basically played like a role that had been confined to men in that she basically played like a female James Dean. And I, I was just kind of like, like yeah. with the smoking and the hair over the eyes and everything, and like, you know, like a Luke Perry or a, some, you know, something like that. I was yeah. just kind of like, ooh, she's so dangerous and she's so haunted, you know, by her past. And I, yeah. if I if I were going to be with a girl, it'd be with her. And isn't it not, you know. But that's the thing, like <laughs> six of one or half a dozen of the other. Like if they're going to focus on one <laughs> character, you know. Right. have it be one or the other but uh that's sure. that's what it is anyway on that note let's get to the cherry picker it's not like they killed on purpose so this this might be a little difficult i don't know who's our cherry on top here oh god because there's so many different factors to consider um like we could look at it like character wise and just like you know who who was the character that kind of <laughs> transcended the rest it's 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 hard to say or we could just like you know performance wise like you know we, we there are no strict rules about how we do this including no. the cherry picker um, i think the fact that we both craved we were both in complete uh, uh agreement that we both craved so much more Piper Laurie in this movie, but that what she did on screen was satisfying. I'd be fine with giving it to her. But that's the thing. Like, she wasn't there enough sort of thing. Um, people who were there didn't satisfy me as much. I, I understand <laughs> It's that. up to you. It's There's... your movie, so I will go along with whatever you choose. <laughs> I might actually, even though I said she was my favorite, I might actually okay. say Robert uh, Patrick. Because... He was just, in any iteration that he showed up in, whether he was, like, the uh, angry coach or just, like, the really, like, relaxed and cool, like, yeah. oh, what kind of a human being would I be sort of thing. Like, every whenever he was on screen, he was just giving it, like, just there. there's a lot of nuance to everything that he was uh, playing up there. And yeah. I think he, he was probably the most intimidating or imposing at least of those the, the faculty characters and since this is called right. the faculty i mean the only character i mean like because i could say casey but that is kind of boring um because i might actually lean more to josh hartnett just because it was just like oh josh hartnett like he's front and center and i just <laughs> oh but he's a terrible character he's a terrible movie, character though. he's a terrible character and it's more it, it really just comes down to like the aesthetic of it all it's just like i I think faculty, I think Josh Hartnett. Um, I'm going to, I'll say Robert Patrick. Okay, I can get on board yeah. with that. Also, because the only thing that I think could have improved is if, like, there had been some kind of, like, uh, 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 equity among, like, you know, the, the transformation with the with the faculty. If, if he would have, like, donned eye makeup and lipstick as, you know, the same way that the female counterparts <laughs> did. <laughs> they all should have just got, like, gone, gone full drag queen. Like, that would have been great. They just been like, hello, we're fabulous. That's but the, that actually might... It's just might... a, a, a race of gay aliens. It's Roger from American <laughs> Dad. <laughs> it's just like all the Disney classic villains. <laughs> but but, totally. but no gay coding, just just gay. That would have been fabulous. But yeah. anyway, no, um, I agree. Okay. He's our he's our cherry on top. Okay, nice. That was unexpected. I I, I did not know where we were going with that. So last week on the cherry picker, <laughs> we asked you who deserves to die the most in Black Christmas, uh, not yeah. 2019. We did the original 1974. I nominated Peter Smythe. That's how we say it, uh, not Smith. Mm -hmm. And you nominated Billy Lenz. You nominated the movie. <laughs> And across Patreon, Instagram, and YouTube, this is actually very close. Uh, 414 Ooh. for Petey and uh, 369 for Billy. So oh, thanks, P guys. Peter Smythe got the chopping block. Uh, let's, okay. let's read the comments. Winter Wonder, my all-time favorite. I feel like this movie holds up really well. It still feels fresh despite the early 70s fashion slash decor and the cliches <laughs> that have been done to death in other horror films after the fact. Oh, this is a long one. Um, <laughs> Bob Clark's directing is wonderful and builds tension and suspense throughout the score is eerie and heightens the tension and a strong showing from all the cast. Everyone stands out and is memorable even if they don't have much screen time. The characters all feel real and not cardboard cutouts. Right. Uh, I'm gonna skip ahead, I'm so sorry. Uh, as for the question, Peter was an immature man-child 
I think if he got over himself and went to therapy, he possibly could have been all right down the road. Maybe not, but he didn't kill anyone. Billy is a great villain and very scary and interesting. And I, I love that we know so little about him. That's what makes villains scarier, in my opinion. That's the problem with a lot of villains these days. These over, They over-explain things ad nauseum. <laughs> way more frightening when you don't know why they do what they do or their motive is vague. But hmm. having said that, Billy was killing all my Pi Kappa Sigma queens. So I say Billy gets the chop. Thanks. I, I, I would want to ask Winter Wonder if they're a villain for being so verbose. <laughs> but i know I appreciate irony. it thank you yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> thank, no, you. thank you though thank, thank you, you for that uh uh amethyst frost forget the baby just needed to abort peter and their horrible relationship first Ooh. <laughs> john m peter was douchey and deserved to be dumped but not killed billy is terrifying and that ending completely unsettled me that said i don't believe he was given the last name Lens until 2009. I have no idea. I have no idea. I'll take your word for it. Uh, Rob (laughs) Rangel. Having been a long time since I watched the movie, Peter is the one, I think, who is the main character's boyfriend or one of the girls. I was surprised he wasn't killed. He definitely should have. Well, you need to watch the movie more recently because he was. (laughs) (laughs) slasher slasher and suits billy is a killer peter was an old school dude from the era okay what so that seems pretty apologetic (laughs) (laughs) but but without it but without a conclusion uh i i I can draw the conclusion i'm being voted billy I'm, i'm being very bitchy right now (laughs) <laughs> I should be right more now. bitchier. Uh, Alan Price. <laughs> I just watched this with my parents for the Christmas movie theme we do every year. Peter was an ass, but didn't deserve that. I do hate him, but he didn't deserve it. Now, Billy, oh, yeah, definitely hands down. I loved how different he felt from the remake to the original. I'm not talking about that 2019 bullshit fest. Right. Sorry for the cursing. We curse all the time here. <laughs> oh, my gosh, yeah. yes. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I said cunt earlier. Have you noticed, like, cunt is now, like, it's this widely accepted term. Like, Gen Z have, like, they'll, they've adopted it. It's just like, oh, mm-hmm. she was serving so much cunt. Or they'll just be like, that yeah. was really cunty. And here I was, yeah. like, throughout all my 20s, and I would, like, use yes. that word very sparingly because I knew that it was, like, a trigger word. Yeah. And it was very dangerous. It used to, to use be it. a trigger wor- word, y'all. It and used to now be like the worst thing you could call a woman. What's the yeah. worst word that you can say? Cunt. And now it's just like the power has been drained completely out of or it's been the power has been like I guess returned to, to the, the, the cunt. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But anyway, they, yeah. They returned we, to the rightful owners. Like, yeah, women took it back. Good this, for them. We swear because this is a very cunty <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Podcast. I, agree 100%. <laughs> yeah. I was especially cunty uh, with my esteem for this movie. <laughs> you're you're a very cunty faculty. Uh, <laughs> the faculty. Uh, viewer, yeah. The faculty. <laughs> okay, go on. The, that was yeah. ridiculous. Go yeah. on. Yeah, we're well, we're that too. Uh, Ab Pari. People really choosing Peter over Billy. Smack my head. Oh. You know, that's that's the name of the game. Sean Princick, I should really hate Billy, shouldn't I? Uh, going to have to go for Peter, though. He was just the worst. My personal headcanon is that Peter was indeed the killer. The voice we hear at the end is just the killer's spirit echoing throughout the attic. There's no <laughs> unnecessary sequel to confirm or deny either way. So that's my theory, and I'm sticking to it. Yeah. Peter and Billy are one and the same. Also, it's awesome seeing Nancy's dad in this because I didn't even know I liked him until seeing this film. I'm not a big fan of the parents in Elm Street, R.I.P. Margot Kidder, legend. Mm. Dylan Jameson, Billy may be the killer, but my vote goes to Peter. From what I remember, he's constantly pushing for his girlfriend to keep a baby that she did not want. And I'm personally of the mindset that no man, no man should tell a woman what to do with her body. I just, That's fair. I put the emphasis on that for dramatic effect. Yeah, I saw the finger and everything. If you <laughs> watch it on YouTube, yeah. you got a little bonus there. <laughs> um, where are we here? Fred Hodder. I was somewhat tempted to vote for Billy, but he is 
too entertaining for me in good conscious vote for to vote for him uh wait until you cover the 2006 remake and then the tables will turn while on the other <laughs> hand peter was an obnoxious prick of a boyfriend who framed himself basically the og trevor from scream 4 mm. um i don't know i'm trying to think of trevor from scream 4 i think he, he 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 sucked he cheated on her but he yeah he, he did he was, but he, he wasn't he was trying I mean, to he was, re- kind of, he was trying really hard to redeem himself yeah but also kind of stocky but not i would i think peter is definitely cuntier than <laughs> yeah or prick prickier prickier Pr- pricklier. Remember pricklier like prick, no, like prick, prick is like the the equivalent to kind but prick was like has always well, been okay well you too. know because you you could call a guy a prick and it's just like you know hey you prick but because but you call a woman a cunt back in the day, you know. No, but that's what I'm saying. Was, like back in the day, there was like this double standard where it's like prick was like widely used, but cunt was not. And now, yeah, and now, what's funny is that I hear people say prick, and and people will like shudder. They're just like, oh, I don't like that word. Really? So yeah, it's it's it's, it's 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 they've swapped places. I I mean I like it because it it. It rhymes with dick, so it means the same thing, but it's kind of different. And also, I don't know, it's just, it, you know, variety is the spice of life. Just prick. I mean, this, it, is the, prick. this might be the most sweary we've been. Um, <laughs> they brought it up. Strife <laughs> 19 says, from when I'm posting this, it's 51% to 49%. Interesting to see if it stays that way. I'm voting for Billy because Peter is a creep, but Billy's a killer. Oscar R. Oscar Rewicks. Peter, dark green turtleneck, pull over, matches the Christmas tree, lets impale him on it black Xmas style. <laughs> okay. I love how imaginative some people are. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Blue box. Peter, how dare you destroy that beautiful piano? Piano. <laughs> piano. That's why. No, piano. 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 Not. Hello. <laughs> What? <laughs> Piano? <Hello? laughs> uh, it's the Mona on the Piano. <laughs> uh, Silent God. Saturn. Peter was a bit of a knob and could have handled things better, so I vote for him. I got to say, though, that Jess couldn't have chosen a worse time to tell him about the baby mere hours before his recital. Dick move, really, <laughs> especially since she already made up her mind and didn't want to discuss it anyway, so... Where even was the point? She also killed him, which seems excessive given that he was innocent. So maybe give her the chop. Not only is she a weak <gasps> final girl who will probably be dead by the end of the credits, she also takes the term squeam, squeam, sc- scream, queen, <laughs> squeam. <laughs> she also takes the term scream, queen, way too literal. Wow, like I said, like, is there's a lot of right animosity now. toward Jess that I just don't understand, but... Mm-hmm. Okay, whatever. Yeah. Uh, Hamish. Hamish says Peter because he gives off massive pro-life vibes. The baby is <laughs> in her, not you, Peter. Tut, tut. Uh, <laughs> Blueberry, <laughs> Saturn. Honestly, maybe I'm just getting old, but Billy, yeah. Peter was just awful, but really, come on. John Mills. <laughs> like you're attributing it to age. That is hilarious to me. John <laughs> Mills. John Mills sip. <laughs> Peter is yeah. one of the worst human beings I have ever seen in a film. Uh, and then user VR <laughs> says voting Peter because he is more annoying than Billy. Okay. And, and there we have it. Um, there you go. I got a, so for the faculty, I got a, I, I have no fucking idea, honestly. Um, I'm just looking through the cast here because it's yeah. got to be someone. Um, yeah. I might be leaning towards the dad <laughs> because fuck you, fuck that guy could not even entertain <laughs> the idea that maybe someone was attacked in the school. Like this kid, Casey, has shown no signs of any sort of like delinquent behavior. Or, you know, just like anything other than being the grade A student that he has been, just like super compliant, studies hard, all that shit, probably all these extracurricular activities. And he has a legitimate concern. And all of a sudden, it's just like, all right, 
we're just flying off the handle, send him to therapy, let's rip his room apart, let's ground him, take away his porn. What what is that even? I mean I don't know about you, but I can use my imagination. But anyway, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, too. it's like, just like, it what's that going to stop gonna... him? Yeah, he's got the fucking yeah, exactly. photos of Jordana Brewster. <laughs> <laughs> you know that that's what he's doing. He's like, he's 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 thinking about her, and then he's taking out the magazine, Devin Sawa Final Destination style, and just like fapping to it with uh, Claire Rivers. <laughs> picture in his mind <laughs> oh dear god um yeah i'm gonna go with the dad because he was just like because he was one of those dads you know he was really pressuring him he's like he wanted casey to be like the football kid like he oh, he right, like lit yeah. up and he like beamed up when coach was like yeah. hey we could really use someone like you out there and yeah, that was and yeah it was just like very like sycophantic with him he's just like good luck in the game tomorrow coach it's just like what do you care you fuck wad I'm 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 going with him. I'm pretty settled on that. Uh, Frank I'm, Connors is what the name cool. is appearing. My, Christopher yeah. McDonald. Okay. Going for Chris but, McDonald. Um, okay. Yeah. So I'm looking at a f- uh, I'm scrolling as well on the yeah. IMDb app, and I'm looking at <laughs> a photo of Danny Masterson, who I also forgot was in this movie in a very <laughs> tiny role as fuck up number one. I'm tempted to choose him just because. I, a lot you, has come to light about him as a horrible person, and I'm wondering if he'll get Jared Leto'd. But I don't know if enough people know. It's not really my heart or my conscience. It's more but my. But you're mind. So you're I'm not gonna... picking. Yeah, you're, but you're not picking based on a character. Though. Exactly. So I'm leaning away from it, and I'm going with my heart and my conscience, and I'm gonna I'm gonna choose Zeke. Um, he, <gasps> he really bothers me. Yeah, take your precious Josh Hart in it and shove him. Yeah. <laughs> um, because this is the thing it's not josh hartnett i think you know he, he he did an okay job with what they gave him but i hate the structure of this character because he commits these atrocious acts um beyond bullying like it's full-on harassment of his teacher regardless of how inept she is at her job <laughs> she doesn't nobody deserves to be talked to and treated that way. And then the movie kind of like expects us to also look at him as a hero and root for him. And I, I I don't know. I, I couldn't make up my mind again. It was just like one more thing. The movie just kind of wanted to have it every way and then confuse us at the end with that wave, because it's like, why is everything okay now? Because, (laughs) Did he apologize? <laughs> and is that even enough? And if, if it is, why? <laughs> so, I mean, it just, he's I, I, arguably, I guess, for me, maybe the most problematic character in the entire movie. And I just, I would have been fine with him dying. I would have been fine with it. It would have felt like, good. Like that, back in my day, <laughs> when we had characters who were assholes to that extent... They got killed, yeah. you know, because you treat you treat women that way, you're gonna die. But no, not not in this movie. So kill him, kill him. That's my choice. I probably won't win, but I don't care. In the yeah, you just wanted to go off on your little tangent there, but in the uh, script, <laughs> uh, originally like the one that was written by uh, Bruce Kimmel and David Wechter, uh, mm-hmm. uh he was a lot more antagonistic. They like really toned him down for the movie, but he was uh, like full on bullying Casey actually. Like he uh, Mm. would be like, oh, I'm gonna see you out at the quad. Or he would actually bully him into, there was like one scene that I remember in particular where um, he threatened Casey to like go over to a girl and like pull on her bra strap. So then Casey did that in fear of like being beaten up or taunted by Zeke but then in any way like he I think he got like smacked by this girl or got in trouble because of it so it's just like Casey's life in this movie original conception was like a lot worse and Zeke was like even more antagonistic but at least that would have been leaning more in a definite direction with the character I wouldn't have liked him anymore but the movie wouldn't have been positing that I should and I actually prefer that so there you go so those are your options. You can vote for uh, Casey's dad. What was it? Frank uh, Connor or, or Zeke. 
uh, Z- what is Zeke's last name? Tyler. Zeke, <laughs> Zeke Tyler. He's got two first names. For... <laughs> and, Fr- and, yeah. and Frank Connor. Actually, yeah, two Frank... first names as well. Connor is a first name. Right. I don't know if that's Kevin Williamson or, or the other fellows, but uh, vote your heart, vote your conscience. The poll will be up on uh, Patreon. If you are supporting us there, you can also look for it on our Instagram uh, account which is at the cherry picker pod or you can find it in the community section on youtube uh so vote as many times as you want uh if you are new to the podcast and you are watching us on youtube you can listen to us the uh, rss feed link is in the descriptions down below and if you are listening to us head over to youtube subscribe uh watch our faces there uh edward where can they find you on social media they can't. I'm the wind, baby. How about okay. you? Um, and you can find me. <laughs> I'm not even going to give you an option at, at this point. Uh, I am on Instagram at Retro Bitch Face. I am on Letterboxd, Zach Cherry, Z A C K C H E R R Y. And that is also my YouTube channel, my main YouTube channel. So head over there and subscribe as well. Uh, what do we got going on? Not next week because we are taking the week off. It's the new year. Right. Uh, by the way, <laughs> happy new year, everyone. Uh, well, I guess ha- Merry Merry Christmas. Uh, <laughs> happy holidays. It's, it's, it's Boxing Day at this point, but um, <laughs> but yeah, every everyone have a have a nice New Year's Eve. What's what's gonna be going on when we come back? Well, we're going to be kicking off 2024 with the little thing I like to call 30 Days of Night. If you want more Josh Hart in it, <laughs> we got and that him. Was, and yeah, and, and you had actually suggested that. So I'm, I'm just curious now that I see your beef with Josh Hart in it, where is this coming from? <laughs> it's not a beef with him. It's a, it's a beef with his character, but... This movie, I'm anxious to revisit this movie. It's been a while since I've seen it as well. So 30 Absolutely, Days a Night. If you are uh, supporting on my Patreon, you will get early access to that uh, quite early because we're going to be recording that uh, before the year is over. So uh, consider that. We appreciate all the support you can offer. But thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And-